Hey guys, so I'm finally filming a studio tour. I'm only a little bit late. hallway um, you, you're actually sitting that tripod is sitting literally at the top of the stairs so yeah kind of a little precariously the doors behind me are the entrance to my new studio and art room um, outside the art room as you can see here I have some paintings I'm gonna turn the camera just a little bit sorry if it's a little shaky um, there's paintings um, hanging all over the house. One of the things I enjoy about the new house is I have room for this painting and a number of others. Let me just, there we go. Um, this painting and a number of others. If you um, have uh, followed me for a while, you know I did a photo shoot last year for Yahoo Small Business. This painting was featured in that photo shoot. Um, and this is the one I was working on in that photo shoot. Um, so all of my um, most favorite paintings in this house um, have a spot on the wall inside and outside the, stu the art room, the studio. So yay for that. I love that. Okay, so let's head on into the studio now and let's see what's up. Okay, so as you walk into my space, one of the first things you run into is this little space. Um, I refer to it as an altar space for lack of a better term. Um, this is an old nightstand that was rescued years ago out of a neighbor's dumpster when they were moving and I painted it and it was in my daughter's bedroom for a long time. It was a different color then and then when she moved out and, and didn't want it, which is fine, I said, oh good, because then I get to keep it. Um, <laughs> I repainted it again the color it is now. And I use it for some of my favorite things or special uh, mementos. Uh, my grandmother's sewing box is on the bottom. Um, I've got different little bits and pieces from trips or that people have given me. Um, prayer coins and sacred objects, crystals, my positive affirmation words, today's is satisfied. Um, things people have given me, some feathers for my friend Lisa Swank's birds. She has birds. Um, and some of my favorite artwork pieces, again, are on the wall, things that I love. And that is a great thing to have to greet you when you come into your creative space. Um, you can also see this bottom of this. This is a, one of, a pair of LED lights on tripods that I can uh, leave here and have on like it is now, or I can move it closer to the work table in the center when I need to. It doesn't weigh much, so the whole thing can be lifted up and moved to the table. I try not to turn on the overhead fan light when I'm filming um, because, again, it is a little yellow, um, as are the cam lights that are right above where the camera is right now. Um, I haven't changed them out yet. Um, it is a little bit on the yellow side, plus the ceiling fan's right under the work table, so the light from it reflects on anything that's wet. Um, so I try to use the LED lights. They give off better, brighter, clearer light, and they're not yellow, and they don't, shine, they don't reflect on the work. Um, we're going to go over this way. I have a wall of my ephemera and small bits bank um, that takes up the rest of the wall. Um, and this is where I keep um, these two first two cubbies here and these cubes have books that I actually take things out of to use in collage. The next two cubbies have either reference books, um, ones I, re I refer to a lot. Um, there's another reference library in the other room. Um, or um, found reference material and sewing patterns in the bottom cube. Things that I refer to a lot that I need to keep in this room and not in a library space downstairs or in the other room. Um, the rest of the bank is um, ephemera and small bits. I do have my toaster oven here with another light on top of it. No, I don't use it there. Um, if I need to use the toaster oven to melt plastic or cook clay or something like that, I do move it to the work table out of harm's way so it's not gonna hello set anything on fire. Um, that being said, it does live in the art room, so if I kept it downstairs, people would go, oh, I can make toast in there. I've used it for its place. It's a bad idea. <laughs> um, so it lives up here in the art space. Um, and this um, rack here is something from my old craft show days. I used to put things I had for sale on, 
now I have things, different friends and people have given me hanging on it. Um, like my friend Vic, Vicki Brown who made this Christmas tree ornament and some things from my grandmother um, hanging on it. Some, again, sacred or special objects for me. It's a cute little display rack. Somebody I used to be in a shop with who also did crafts gave me years and years ago. And I love that little rack. So it lives there. There's a salt lamp in the corner. Again, I'm going to give you all a close up at the end. And I'm going to <clears throat> go around at the end um, with some um, music and I'll show you some close-ups and labels of things. So if there's any questions about anything, make sure to leave it in the description below, but stay through to the end of the video and watch um, through to the end. All right, let's go to the next space. So this room was done on a, on a, on a budget. Um, I um, didn't want to spend a lot of money on furniture that was going to get covered in paint and glue and God knows what. Uh, but again, I wanted it to be cute and useful um, and easy to find things. And for me, white is a neutral color um, that makes it easy to see the objects on the shelf, not to have, um, to eliminate visual chaos. I can't work in a chaotic um, space that gets too messy or has too much going on. I, I, I know I'm saying that and you're going, but, 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 but. For me, this is this is this this works for me. Um, all the um, containers and bins or everything are white for the most part. If they were all different colors or they were all a darker color, that wouldn't work for me. I need to have a light, bright space, and I need to have it be as um, visually calm and less chaotic as possible. I think, for lack of a better word, that's what I'm looking for. Now you'll see here I have some wire shelves on the wall above the cubes. This is where my washi tape storage lives and a few other random bits and pieces um, that I use. I don't use them a ton, but I do use them. Um, or things that um, I want to use, I have, I'm not quite sure what to do with, like this random, random ball of lint that came from something. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I don't know. It's just up there. Um, <laughs> I have some baskets of sort of medium-sized collage and ephemera bits. Um, this one just has solid color cardstock and postcards in it. This one has blue book and traveler's notebook stuff. This one has scrap paper books, paint chips, doilies, um, chipboard um, stuff, um, notepads, game cards, time cards. You get the idea. Vintage papers, napkins. Yeah, you get the idea. Then the drawers have the small bits. Um, like a drawer of tassels or a drawer of um, binder clips. Uh, what is this? Metal binder, oh, metal binder labors and record adapters. Anybody remember these? <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, I have a drawer full. Um, plastic game pieces. You get the idea. All those little bits and pieces you collect to do mixed media with. Um, and at some point, um, your little shoebox you were collecting them in is too big and you have too much of a variety of things and you can't find stuff. I discovered long ago I needed to separate them out into some kind of categories and keep them in these um, mini storage drawers. These are by Sterilite. Um, they're the mini five drawer shelves. I'll try to link what I can in the description below. If I forget or there's something I missed, you all leave a comment and I'll put a link, I promise. Um, the cubes are from Target. They are... Um, um, Cheap, easily accessible, easy to find. Um, you can get storage cubes at Ikea too, but more people have Target near them than they do Ikea. Um, I um, love them and um, they come in white, which I love. They used to come with, um, hang on one second. Okay, you used to be able to get these shelves um, to divide your cube into two. So instead of having a cube with just one open space, you could divide it into two. I don't think they make these anymore. I don't know why. I do love them and have a few of them. And sometimes when they pop up on eBay, I do try to buy them. Um, if you have a handy husband or a handy partner, you probably could have them make you um, some shelves to divide the cube in two. I, I do think the IKEA ha um, cubbies do have that. Um, I found bins also from Target that fit in the cubes. They have these short ones and then they do have tall ones that fit in the deeper cubes. Um, these bins all are, of course, labeled, and they all have bigger pieces. These are the large ephemera pieces, medium, small, large. Um, and I have everything from a bin of large vintage papers, um, artwork and texture things, and baby what painted baby wipes, file folders, 
This is all stickers. Um, I have a drawer of nature. Uh, <laughs> dried flowers, all kinds of things. Seashells, tissue paper, um, packaging materials, which is overflowing, and I need to do something about that bin. I need to make stuff or get rid of stuff. Um, tags, um, uh, just salvage, which is generally just a bunch of different stuff that I want to keep that I don't know what to do with. So salvage, I call it salvage. It could be rusty screws. It could be, it could be anything. You never know what's in the salvage bin. Every now and then I go through it and I clean it out, but yeah, salvage. Um, so this is the ephemera bank. And I love this part of my cre new creative space because things are spread out. Nothing is tucked away in a plastic bin and I can find everything. Fabulous. Okay, you may or may not notice that there's a closet door here. This is the furnace and water heater room. I do wish it was a closet. Um, I don't really actually need the extra space, but it's a big room. Anyway, I don't generally go in there. We, you know, open it and check it for spiders every now and then, but otherwise I keep it closed. I do have an art piece hanging on the door. As I said earlier, I do have uh, pieces that I've created or people have given me that I love. Um, around the room and um, they provide for great inspiration. So I love that. Um, this is my sewing table, the section for sewing. Um, I have a Foff 1546 I use for garment construction along with an Easy Lock. I don't generally use these for mixed media pieces. I have a different sewing machine for that. Sewing on paper and paint is bad for your machine if you have a fancy machine and this machine was way too expensive to do that with. Um, I did loan my other little machine out to my mother because she's working on a project. Um, so I don't have that one here right now. Um, and I have, I have it cleaned up. <laughs> I have two shirt projects here on the desk um, that I need to work on sometime this weekend. Um, <laughs> I may not get to them today, but I need to work on them soon. And um, I have, the, this is an Ikea desk and drawers. And all of my sewing notions and tools are in these drawers, including the scissors and needles and elastic zippers, all of that stuff. I have some random bits on the shelf, um, the windowsill here, my scrap bin, um, some books, um, my machine oil, my little birdie tape measure, stuff like that. These jars for my grandmother's um, house that I have filled with vintage lace and um, pins. And I get to overlook the forest, which is a pretty view. Um, the other LED light is here on the table, um, just because that keeps it up and out of my way and provides light to the rest of the room. I do have a light here too. Um, when I'm filming at the work table, I do turn this one on. It provides a little bit extra light. I don't think you can really see it in the camera shot. Um, <clears throat> this is a bin of fabric that I'm currently working on. And this stack is sort of the odd bits stack. My embroidery, floss and supplies, art doll supplies and tools. And then this is sort of just random tools. So my other tape besides washi tape, like my masking tape, my painter's tape, uh, palettes, sponges, gloves, you get the idea all the way down. So <clears throat> this is a, a, an important bank of stuff, but um, it kind of had no home, so it landed here and it works. Okay, this here, this is my paint and coloring supplies. So this is where all of my pens, markers, pencils, powdered pigments, watercolor brushes, uh, alcohol inks, um, mediums, glue, glitter is all up here. Um, of course they're labeled, sorted, and organized, and again I'll give you a close-up at the end of the video, um, but this works for me. Having the ephemera over there and the glue and color and paint over here. It's working out super well and I am easily able to find and create what I need. Um, yeah, and I'm really loving this. This is from a video I saw here on YouTube where she sorted her pens and pencils into bins by color. So if I want a yellow pen or marker, I just pull out the yellow bin. Um, it's not my idea and I will try to link the video in the description below if I can find it but it is a great idea. I do have these cube shelves from Michaels. These have sort of other pens that aren't over there. Um, some of them are backup pens. Um, the uh, Pit, um, Faber-Castell Pit pens and um, the big sort of big markers. 
are over here and also my some of my back of white and black paint pens um, and the little drawers also have like dip pen um, nibs and things um, empty watercolor pans um, erasers pencil sharpeners my crayons paint markers and um, a few chunky pencils uh, watercolor brushes watercolor mediums and then you know down below we have um, paint sorted by kinds, uh, medium, a, a bit of mediums, a bit of glue, a bit of finishes, a bit of glitter, a bit of embossing. Um, you get the idea, a bit of sprays. And this just, this works for me. I'll give you, again, I'll give you a look at the end of the video, a kind of a close up. So as you can see, if you can see, this shelf here is generally clear. Again, I didn't clean up before we started filming this because I want you to see the real space. Um, I am working on some resin tumblers. This is one that's right, waiting to be coated. Um, they're chunky glitter tumblers, so they're going to be a little challenging. Um, if you want to know more about making resin tumblers, I am by no means an expert, but my friend Carla McCants is. She's got her own channel here on YouTube, and I don't know when you all see this if her tutorial videos are out yet, but she is coming out with a tutorial series, a step-by-step, -step, um, um, fully inclusive, what to do, what not to do, how to fix problems, all that kind of stuff, how to organize your space if you're doing tumblers. Um, series. So I will link her channel in the description below. Anyway, um, these are the pieces I need out to finish the two tumblers I'm working on. I have one here that's spinning and drying. Um, they are chunky tumblers, so um, they're going to take three or four, maybe even five coats of resin. So I'm doing thin coats with sanding in between um, because, you know, the little chunky glitter bits stick out. So again, if you want to know more about that, go check Carla's channel out. I'm not an expert, but anyway, I've got one sitting here. It's wet. On this shelf are all my resin supplies. Again, binned and marked um, by type and category, uh, and that really works for me. On the bottom, on the floor, I have a gallon bucket of pouring medium. Behind it are uh, art tools that um, could be misconstrued as kitchen supplies, like a big metal pot. So when I want to do sort of nature eco dyeing, I have my I have my eco dyeing um, mediums here um, mixed up in spray bottles, and the pots I can cook cook that stuff in are in the back on the bottom of the floor underneath this blue shelf. Now this table in the corner is another IKEA desk, um, same kind as the sewing table, same size even. This is my husband's table in for the art room. Um, with my old Ott um, desk lamp, which is a magnifying light, um, he does models and miniatures, so this is his space to work at. And, of course, when he's not here, I kind of abscond with his space if I need it. Don't tell him. Shh. Okay, this over here, this is my painting station. So this room has two of these sort of window bays in it. Um, this is one of them. Again, it overlooks part of the driveway and the woods. Um, and this is where my easel lives, and this is where I work on um, my not huge paintings. Um, I will, um, I don't think I said anything about that. I have tried to film this a couple times, and I will try to insert the clip here um, of me talking about how I set up for the big paintings. Doing the big paintings, I cover this whole thing in dollar store shower curtains. And I tape it to the shelves here and to the small bits bag with painter's tape. And then the canvases can rest on the shower curtain, on the cubes, and then back against the wire shelves. And I have a Velcro little loop I'll put on the back of the canvases to just sort of um, secure it to the wire shelf so it doesn't flop around and go anywhere. And I can work on a really big canvas that way. So that works for me. I've got my, my words, I've got a few quote books. I've got this random ball of like lint that's from something. I don't know. I'm gonna, I couldn't throw it away. It's, I, I can't explain it. Anyway, let's move around the room and go to the next space. Maybe the sewing, whoop, where are we? We're at sewing table right there. Um, Cause those I do behind where the camera is. Um, but when I'm working on the average size painting or something small, I use the easel here. Um, this is just a piece of paper that I've been kind of working on for a while. Um, and I have one of my two Ikea carts here that I have set up for a rolling painting station. I um, have a nylon cutting board that I've put magnets on the back and little pieces of cardboard in the corners. 
so that it sits securely on top of the um, cart and doesn't slide around or wobble around. Uh, underneath it I can store some spare deli paper and inspiration images, some binder clips that I might need over here. And the bottom two shelves on this have my rags, so that works out great. And then in the corner I have a table with my water containers. And in the window I have an iPod dock with my old iPod in it so I can turn on some music while I'm painting. And open the window, it's really great. And I've got a, I've got a light right here, I don't know if you can see it on camera. So this is my computer desk. Now this desk I've had from when we lived at the old house. Um, I've had it for a long time. It's from Staples. I don't think they make it anymore. Um, it's a corner desk, but it works really well for me. Um, all of the tools, I'm sorry, furniture pieces for the most part are white. All the bins are white. Um, the shelves are white if possible. Um, having it all be white or light colored lessens the visual chaos for me. I'm not the artist that can create in a chaotic space. And I need as much calm and peace in my space as possible. Um, hence, a lot of different ways to play music. Uh, all the furniture being white or light colored. Um, the altar space or favorite objects table at the entryway is all about creating for me peace and calm in the space to promote creativity. Uh, there's a lot of really famous artists that had chaotic, crazy spaces and they created beautiful masterpieces. I am not one of those people. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is my computer table um, where I do um, the bulk of the social media stuff and paperwork, video editing and that sort of thing, paperwork. Um, above it you'll see I have these two wire uh, racks with more, again, favorite objects and inspirational images and business license um, hanging from. Uh, those two wire racks are from Ikea. Um, this really works for me. I do have a footstool under the desk. I don't know if you can see that. I guess you can see the top of it. I'm short. So, yeah, I need something to put my feet on. This is the other window bay. So, this is where my little table with my typewriter lives that I can pull out um, and take to the work table and type and create quotes on it. I love to use typed uh, words um, or typed quotes or phrases or sayings in my art journals. I love that. I love my, it's, a little, it's an Underwood typewriter. Um, this shelf is all of the non-fun office stuff, um, as is the other IKEA cart here um, that's here behind that. Um, this is all sh mostly shipping supplies. It has some printer paper on the bottom um, and some labels, but this is all like Etsy store stuff. Um, this is my printer, um, some random office supplies and paper, a bin of electronics and that sort of thing. Where I can, I try not to put things on the floor under the shelves if I can help it. Um, this is one of those spaces. I try to keep it up off the floor. I can't do that with everything, but I try to over here in this corner. I do have a chair. So I can sit here on my chair and my cup of coffee and I can ugh, look out the window and I can watch the neighborhood. I can turn it a little bit and see the woods. Um, it's a really great space. Again, I've got another um, speaker over here. This is a Bose uh, Bluetooth um, that will hook up to my computer or my cell phone. And I've got some more favorite objects on the windowsill behind me. Some dragons, Buddha. Um, it's a really great space. Got some silk. Yeah, I love this space. I've got my pot wall pockets with my my mood, mini mood boards and um, other random paperwork and stuff here, which I love. This is my stencil rack. Now I do have um, a playlist of um, things, um, including the stencil storage. Um, ideas. There's more of those um, art room organization videos coming. I'll have a playlist for them. I'll try to remember to link them all in said playlist. Um, I've included in the playlist a couple of vlogs where I've showed parts of this art room and uh, old, stu old studio room tours from the old house. Um, so if you want to check that out, check out the playlist in the description below. But this is a really great solution for my stencils. I've wanted to do something like this for storage for a long time but I not only did not have room for it in the old house, I didn't have a good solution for what I wanted to do um, that was affordable until recently. So I found this, this is actually a retail store display. Um, I found it at a, a 
online site and I bought it from them. So anyway, watch the art room organization video and you'll see all about that. Um, let's move to the last space. Now, because this room is um, capable of being used as a fifth bedroom, it has two big, huge wall closets here. Um, these closets have, um, uh, for instance, this one has, uh, this is all Etsy store stuff. <laughs> this is all notepads and travel art journals. My um, uh, die cutting machine is in here. The fabric stash is in here. Of course, everything is vision labeled. And yes, I'm going to give you a close-up look because I don't think you're going to be able to see that from the camera angle that you're at now. This is the other side of the closet. All of my rubber stamps are in here, my iron, my bin of um, interfacing, um, um, acrylic pouring supplies, punch drawers of punches, they're all, they all live in here. And the nice thing about this is, yes, they're organized and labeled and they're uh, really easy to find things in the closet, but they're not necessarily uh, visually calming. So I can do this. Oops. That works for me. <laughs> um, so this is the new studio space. I'm going to give you a little um, tour here and some close-ups and at the end. And so stay tuned for that. But if you have any questions about anything in particular about my space, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I do want to show you the work table in the middle of the room before we go. Hang on. Okay, this is the workspace in the middle of the room. Call it the art island, for lack of a better term. I don't know, that seems like it might be a good term. So this is an old conference table I actually got for free. I did a yard sale with some old coworkers years and years and years ago. She was selling this table, I forget for how much, I think she wanted like 50 bucks for it. And it didn't sell at the end of the day and she didn't want to take it home with her. I kept it. I said, can I have it? She said, sure, take it. Um, and I have a quilter's cutting mat on top of it that I've cut down widthwise to fit the top of the table. It's a nice, sturdy, thick plastic nylon mat. Works well. When it gets too beat up and too stained and too crazy, I just go use a 40% off coupon at Joann's and go get a new one and cut it to fit. Um, that works for me. But I use them until they're like dying. Um, at either end of the table, I have some wire shelving. This one is for drying, and it has my scissors and some pencils, some glue and things on it. That one is for brushes and journals and homemade stamps and things. So this is like a tool one. This is a drying one for the most part. Um, and that really works for me. Um, as you can see here, I've got some bits on the table, and I've got a nonstick mat. Um, I do need to do some journaling. Um, I use muffin tins from the dollar store um, to go around to my different banks of tools and supplies and collect different things in them. So this one has mark making tools, um, some neo colors, some oil pastels, some chunky colored pencils, some chalk pastels and things like that in it. And this one has items from the um, small bits bank. And then this is just a plastic tray from the Japanese dollar store Daiso, and it has collage papers from the medium and large bits bank. And these live on my table, and I try to pick from them first, and if I can't find what I want in them, then I go over to the bank um, of appropriate materials, and I pick what I need for that page or project. Uh, but this really works for me. When I need to clear the table off to do something in particular, all of these things, including the journals, can fit on this wire rack at the end of the table. And um, if I have things that are wet and drying, they go on the shelves over here. All of the wire racks in this shelf, uh, the shelves are from Target, the cubes are from Target, the plastic bids for the most part are from Target. Um, I love Ikea but Target is easier to find, and so I go there first. I do have some things from the Dollar Tree. You can buy similar white bins from Dollar Tree sometimes. The Sterilite 5-drawer cabinets, um, you can find at Walmart. Um, 
There's a couple other places. I live in the Pacific Northwest. We have Fred Meyer, and Fred Meyer has them. And that's those little five st uh, drawer stair light cabinets that I keep the small bits in. Um, they are, you can get them at Fred Meyer, but you can also get them on Amazon. Um, and then some of the desks are from Ikea, and um, that just, that works for me. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a nice art room. You also don't have to have a big room. Now, my old room, I had a lot of stuff in a little tiny space. I had more stuff in there than I have now. I know you're not going to believe me, but that's true. It was just stacked uh, in every crack you could find and binned, and it was so hard to get stuff out. Here, I'm just spread out. Instead of going up, I've gone out and I have less stuff. So that means I can find it easily and it's super well organized. At least I think so, for me it is. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do and I hope this um, you enjoy this little tour of the new studio space. I'm gonna do a uh, close up um, to music here at the end. So if you don't wanna watch that, you don't have to, you can stop now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you can, support the free content here on YouTube and over on Facebook uh, by um, clicking on the link, link tree list of links and there you'll find my Etsy shop, my Amazon affiliate store, Patreon, my tip jar, uh, all the different places that you can buy merch with my artwork on it, including Teespring. You can also find places to follow me on social media. My Instagram is there, my Twitter is there, and all that stuff. So you can go check it out, the link tree, list of links in the description below, um, along with anything else that I've promised will be down there too, including Carla's YouTube channel. And um, I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do. Don't forget to uh, do what you can with the space that you have and you don't, it's not about the size of the space or the amount of the stuff. It's about having a space that makes you happy with stuff that makes you happy that you feel you can create with. So whatever that is for you, do that. All right, go out and have a great day, everyone. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. We'll get right into that close-up shot and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.